In this video, I will show you how we rescued the original concept of bread from confines of food processing industry. In the world where greed is the predominant driving force, especially in food manufacturing industry, we can't rely on them or regulatory agencies for food purity, nutrition, and safety. Grain milling companies separate ground grain into bran, germ, and endosperm. Endosperm is the source of white flour, highly praised for its bright white color. White flour is stable and can be stored at ambient temperatures for years. In 1996, a famous laboratory experiment on rats showed that animals fed only with white flour died, while the control group fed with whole grain flour lived. Today, dozens of varieties of white bread are still sold everywhere. There are also many varieties of so-called whole grain bread made with fortified flour. Fortified flour is white flour with added bran and vitamins. Great, you might say. What's the problem then? We have a whole grain bread equivalent now. Modern nutrition science tells us that for vitamins and micronutrients to be effective in our bodies, they need to be presented to our gut together with all natural substances present in the nature packaged food. Therefore, separating and adding micronutrients to depleted or ultra-processed foods alone is not effective and can lead to malnutrition. So if whole grain flour is superior in nutrition, why do grain milling companies still use complicated sequential multi-mill process to separate ground grain into three separate parts? The answer is long-term storage and large-scale grain milling make it more profitable. The milling of grain, however, exposes fatty acids present in the germ to oxidation by air, making flour taste rancid in less than a week. Commercial milling also exposes grain to high temperatures during milling, accelerating fatty acid oxidation. Therefore, the germ component has to be removed during milling to make white flour stable. Is there a way to solve this problem and use whole grain flour? Humanity has done it for millennia. That's why every village had a mill that ground fresh flour for residents on an as-needed basis. It was done by slow stone grinding, where grain was never exposed to high temperatures. Freshly ground flour then can be used and stored for about a week. Of course, today we have refrigeration and can store freshly ground flour in the freezer. Freezing flour is too expensive for agribusiness because it would require costly cold storage and cold shipping. It is cheaper to continue keeping the public distracted and confused by marketing gimmicks like whole grain fortified bread and keep profits coming. You and I, however, can rescue the bread idea and its wholesomeness ourselves. Small portable grain grinding machines like the one we use are available today and everyone has a fridge with a freezer. Dr. Royal Lee, an American nutritionist, engineer and inventor, spoke about the dangers of industrial flour production as far back as the 1930s. To demonstrate that milling flour can be done safely, he invented and built the world's first electric household grain grinder. The grain grinder developed in the 1930s by Dr. Royal Lee is still manufactured by the Royal Lee Organics Company. We own one of the Dr. Lee's grain grinders. We make our flour using hard red wheat grain purchased from organic farms in the Pacific Northwest. Whole grain is stable for years and we buy it in 25 or 50 pound bags. Our Royal Lee grinder is ideal for hard wheat milling. We are milling 60 to 80 cups of flour at a time. The grinder has a seven and a half cup reservoir and mills that amount of grain in about six minutes. So it takes me one and a half hours to grind 60 cups of flour, including setup and cleanup. At the smallest gauge setting, this grinder makes fine flour for bread, pancakes, or crackers. With Dr. Lee's grinder, the grain and flour are never exposed to more than 35 degrees above ambient temperature. The grain passes through the grinder in few seconds. This avoids oxidation of flour components during grinding. To ensure that our whole grain flour stays fresh, we store it in the freezer at minus 20 degrees. We use each batch of flour in about six weeks, so our flour never gets old or rancid. As with any device, I had to learn how to clean and troubleshoot this grinder. 
when cleaning the keys to remove most of the flour from the metal parts before rinsing them with cold water. This governor and disc assembly has a spring and ball bearings. It's particularly important to clean this part carefully to prevent grinder malfunction next time. We started to wash this part in the dishwasher and didn't have any troubles with the grinder operation since. We have been using Dr. Lee's grinder for five years now. It looks like something from the 1950s. A heavy cast, all metal body with smooth flowing curves design. The more I use this grinder, the more I love it. It's like having a classic 1950s car. Quirky and noisy, but fun to drive. Let me show you how we make our raisin bread now. The day before baking, we take our yeast starter from the refrigerator and let it warm up to room temperature for an hour or two. At the same time, we weigh flour to replenish the starter and the flour for our bread recipe. Since it is stored in the freezer, the flour needs to warm up. Next, we mix 200 grams of flour with a cup of room temperature south door starter and about 250 grams of water. We'll let that mix rest on the counter for about eight hours to let the yeast expand their population. Once the yeast mixture is very bubbly, we add the rest of the flour and more water, kneading it in the mixer until the flour is moistened. This distributes yeast throughout the flour and gives the moistened flour proteins time to unfold before we add the rest of the ingredients. One hour later, we add salt dissolved in small amount of water, followed by adding anise seeds and raisins. We like plenty of raisins on our bread, so you can use smaller portions of raisins if you prefer. Once uniformly mixed in the food processor, using a plastic scraper, we transfer the butter onto the pre-oiled or lined with parchment baking vessel. We developed our recipe to fill the La Crusade almost to the top once the bread is fully risen by the next morning. The oven is preheated to 325 degrees and La Crusade is placed inside for baking at 300 degrees for two hours and 15 minutes. We found that baking at lower temperature yields more evenly baked bread without burnt edges. Once we confirm that a 200 to 205 degrees temperature is achieved in all the parts of the bread, it is ready to be released from La Crusade onto the metal mesh tray for cooling. After the bread is cooled, we cut it for storing in a tight container in the refrigerator or freezer. To learn more about the dangers of ultra-processed food and our way of avoiding these foods, watch this video next. Let us know in the comments what you think. See you then. Cheers.